Well, let's just start by saying hi to everybody, I guess. Hi, everyone. Hi. My is, uh, Mariam, and I am guest starring on Mia's channel today. I am super honored. <laughs> <laughs> the honor is all mine. I'm uh, really happy to finally be roasting in a duet with someone. It's gonna be so much fun. Uh, for today's video, we're going doing something different. So there's the two of us. We'll be roasting everything that we um, noticed that has been released lately. And it's mostly going to be images and the sound in the background. So if you just want to go ahead, grab a cup of coffee, just do something else while you're listening to us. Uh, that would be a good idea. Okay, let's get started. Do you have anything that you want to start with or should I just start sending stuff out? No, I'm just going to leave it to you because I this so just in case people don't know I've never done this video before and I'm super excited But that I'm also a little bit nervous because I've never really roasted anything. So let's see if my roast levels can match up yours. Okay, so I think we're just gonna start with the most recent thing. I actually saw it today on Trend Mood. It's the, a, a new Juvia's palette, and it's the Queen palette in collaboration with someone called Fumi de Saluvold. Oh. She, and she's, she seems to be a black influencer, but we don't have an inside yet. Okay, so all we can see is that the packaging is has a white background on, on it. I think it's going maybe to be warm with pops of greens and blues because if you look at like the jewelry that she has, mm -hmm. she seems to be having those pops. Um, are you aware of the latest controversy with Juvia's Place? Yes, I did hear about uh, Juvia's Place a little bit and these days pretty much every brand has some sort of a controversy going yeah. on about it and I think you know, because we are now on social media and everything you say is recorded forever and ever and people have opinions about everything. As soon as you say something wrong, people are going to be pissed about it. And I think um, especially a lot of indie brand owners just have, j they just don't have the like business marketing background and they just don't really know how to do this properly. So sometimes they say inappropriate things and they don't have anyone to stop them. And then it's out into the world and people have opinions on it. That's very true. I also um, notice a lot of indie brands that just their owners do not know when to stop and don't have any semblance of not even professionalism, but like a sense of self-preservation when they should just stop talking and stop digging their own grave. You know, yes. with Juvia's, I think this is damage control because they have been accused that they cater more to white influencers. That this is their way of just saying, yeah, that's not true. That's not what we are about. I'm wondering if it's like a genuine effort or if it's pandering to uh, the base that they kind of alienated with their latest decisions. I, w I always want to give everyone the benefit of the doubt. And my feeling is a little bit, if something like this is going on now it has been planned for a while i think Good probably point. before mm -hmm. the whole controversy started and honestly with the way juvia's place started i cannot imagine that she does not want to cater to women of color because i think that was her original inspiration i really cannot imagine that she has any sort of malicious intent but maybe you know, marketing and selling product in the end of the day is all about business. So if you have to get the white people to talk about it so that everyone else does, you, you do what you got to do. Or it's, I, I really don't know, but I really cannot imagine that the owner of Julia's Place wants to cater to white people. Yeah, I don't know. I didn't, I didn't make a video on it, although I was tempted to because, you know, I'm like a social justice harpy. You I are. was tempted to. But then I was like, you know, maybe I just don't have the right perspective to come out with a video about it because I'm very, very, very white and maybe True. I'm missing something, you know, so I just let people of color talk about it and not try to add my voice on top of theirs. So what we'll see. I am wondering what this release will look like. Uh, I looked a little bit at the Instagram of the lady who's on the collab and she seems to be into colorful makeup. So I'm actually quite curious what this is going to look like because personally I really enjoy Juvia's Place uh, palette mm -hmm. and their formula and the, you know, the overall quality of her product. 
and I am not ready to be canceling Julia's place just yet. <laughs> I, I cancel, someone has to like super fuck up for me to cancel them. Yeah, that's also a valid viewpoint. Like I'm not, I try not to tell to my friends, YouTube or otherwise, oh, you should cancel this brand or oh, I won't be friends with you if you don't have this brand canceled. Because at the end of the day, like there's, there's no ethical consumption under capitalism and maybe they do certain types of activism that I don't participate in and that it's very important for them and so that's how they do that their part in this whole thing and for some people makeup is just makeup you know I try not to impose my will and my cancelling tendencies on others I like to see myself as someone who is in the middle I, I, I don't want to completely close my eyes if someone is being particularly an asshole which <laughs> happens Kat Von D. Yeah, <laughs> Kat Von D. Uh, she's the only one that I've been like truly pissed mm -hmm. off at. But with everyone else, I really try to, to, to see it that way. I don't really know what's going on behind closed doors. I don't really know these people. Uh, so who am I to cancel them? I can have my opinion about it, but I don't want to influence too much other people in how they should feel about it because i think you know everyone has this thing on their neck called a head and they can use it to make their yeah. own opinions but yeah. i really appreciate hearing other people's opinions because sometimes you hear a perspective that you didn't quite think about Is that positive note should we move on to the next release let's do okay so we've got a new opv beauty palette have you ever tried them no, but they have been on my radar for a little bit because they do have interesting color stories. And I believe they are a European-based brand. Is that I correct? Think so. I, I think so. I think UK. I'm not entirely UK. sure. Yeah, yeah. I just sent you their new uh, yes. palette, Tropical Dreams. Apparently it's vegan, about 30 euro, no, 30 pounds, 37 dollars. And should be coming out soon. I, th I think you, you really like this color scheme. I do. And at the same time, I don't. And I'll tell you why. I, uh, I really like palettes which have like a lot of colorful, like a colorful story with blues and greens. And there's definitely blues and greens in here. And there's a bit of orange and this beautiful yellow in the middle. But I hate it when they look like a jumbled mess. Uh, okay, fair point, fair this point. This looks a bit like a jumbled mess to me. And did you say this costs 36 euros? 37 dollars, which I think would be like 40 euros almost. Yeah, so that's pretty expensive yeah. for a brand that I don't really know if it has proven itself on the market. I don't know. I, Maybe other I, people have other opinions on it, but I've never tried anything from them. And for me to pay this amount of money is a bit iffy. Um, I do have one of their palettes. I have their Yemoja, Yemoya. I don't know how to correctly pronounce it. And I did like the quality of it. The shimmers are really nice, but the mattes did have some fallout. I'm not sure if this is the same formula or not. I would be interested if the, in this if I didn't realize that I have all of these shades just scattered around my collection. Maybe I don't have that yellow or that turquoise next to it, but I think I have almost everything. So to me, spending 40 euros on it, on a brand whose quality to me was, it didn't make me fall in love with it, it was fine. I wouldn't feel comfortable paying that amount of money just to satisfy my curiosity. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I see a couple of neutrals here, which look very similar to me. The, the ones that oh, are jumbled yeah. all, all over. And I just don't understand the layout of this because I can see that there is like gradations of blue, but they're scattered all over the palette for some reason. And I don't understand why brands do that. Is it to Be stimulate creativity? I, I think it is to stimulate creativity on one hand, because when I look at it, I can kind of picture trios or quads that would create nice looks with nice color contrast. Mm -hmm. And I think it's, oh, also, it's also to make people not see if certain shades are similar. Mm -hmm. I can understand it and I think I appreciate the concept, but sometimes they just take it a notch too far. Yeah, fair. Okay, so we've got a couple of ColourPop releases to talk about, as usual. 
Also, I'm 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 really feeling like we're the beauty news girls. I don't know if you watch them, but I've I'm really seen a couple feeling, of their videos. Yeah, yeah, I'm really feeling like Cat and Haley vibes from us right now. <laughs> I see, they are releasing like crazy, and it's it's giving me a bit of fatigue in a sense. I can't keep up with ColourPop. Honestly, I kind of sort of know what they're releasing, but if you if you want me to keep up with them, I will have to like spend my time full-time job following yeah. ColourPop's releases and nobody's paying me for that shit, so no, thanks. The only reason I'm able to keep up is because I do these videos, but otherwise it's absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> okay, so let's start with this new um, I Am Becky G collab. This new collection includes, and I'm uh, I'm actually quoting Beauty News, Viva Ultra Glossy Lip Bundle, that's $18, and you've got like a sparkly, shimmery champagne, a chestnut sort of rosy brown, a reddish brown, mm -hmm. and you've got uh, Super Shock Pigment Foursomes, that's $20. Mm -hmm. You've got a magenta, an orange, a gold, and a turquoise. And the full collection is $35 launching on the 26th of July. What do you think? So I think the lip glosses are actually quite interesting because lip glosses are super in at the moment. Yeah. I can't say I'm digging much that metallic one. The champagne one looks a little bit metallic and I can't say I'm all about that metallic uh, lip gloss game because it for on me personally it just doesn't look nice but i can imagine other people will and i do think that the selection of colors is actually quite nice i do i do like the colors i've also seen people pair it with her palette the thing is that these are super shock pigments and they dry out easily from what i've heard or you gotta take care with them so i would maybe buy these if these were colors that i would wear day in and day out just to make sure that are, they're not gonna rot in my drawer but I don't trust myself to always use these but otherwise I do think that this is really pretty very summery very on point yes I would say overall for someone who doesn't have these products it might be an interesting release oh, but yeah. for people who collect makeup this we have this over and over and over again yeah especially if you're like in colorful makeup yes I, I see this would be good for someone that maybe wears mostly neutrals, but then on a, on, a, on a special occasion they would like, oh, I just grabbed that Becky G blue single and pop it on my lid and this is like my, just my wedding guest makeup or something. I could see that happening. Yeah, and the colors are, they're colorful, but there's also a little bit of subtlety to them. So I mm -hmm. think people who are afraid of color might be like, oh, I can maybe pull off this sort of muted magenta purple shade or that tangerine kind of orange because it's not like a neon color mm -hmm. kind of color speaking of orange and tangerine color pop okay. is continuing their monochrome series and they have this orange you glad palette i i do i do actually like the play on the aren't you glad yeah same <laughs> I think here it's they get me with their puns and i want this because these are like these are the types of oranges that i like where they're more peachy than actual orange. And I also like those um, those light shades in the middle. I'm, I'm honestly okay. torn because I also want the their newest peach palette. That's on my wish list for after my no buy. Mm -hmm. So I don't think I need both. But this is really pretty. I, I'm not going to lie. I think this is a very nice release and I do really like these little monochromatic palettes that they have going on that cater to people's wishes and desires because people have been asking for like a yellow and orange monochromatic palette so I do think it's it's a really clever release um, but I have to say this I don't know whether it's because the picture that they made here is quite light but all of these colors look like they have very pastel tones to them yeah that's exactly why I like them to be fair yeah yeah, because I'm not into like the strong neon oranges, but I do love me a good peachy orange. Mm, I can see I can see how that's appealing, definitely. Mm -hmm. And I think it's very nice that they have like the more creamsicle type of orange, but also like the more coral type of orange, almost leaning red. So there's a good range of mattes in here, but I have to say I'm a little bit disappointed with the metallics. I don't know whether it's because the I haven't seen swatches of the metallics, but... 
I'm missing like a real true tangerine orange metallic. Oh yeah, that would be so pretty. Now they've got lip crayons and you can buy these individually for seven dollars or you can buy them in packs for 12 if I recall correctly. And we've got just more puns. I love their puns. Coconuts about you. You're a peach. Give me a slice. Cherry and bright. Guava have it. Dragon my heart around. Okay, if I was just into the puns, I would probably buy everything. But... I know, same. <laughs> no, other than that, uh, I think it. So the thing about ColourPop and why I don't really mind that they release like a million things per day is that they do at least try to come up with different types of products. Oh, yeah, so now definitely. they've come up with lip crayons. Okay, that's kind of fun. Uh, but first of all, I think crayons are mm, a little bit childish. I, what kind of a formula are these supposed to be? Ultra moisturizing, apparently. So okay, with a sheer so, wash of color. So that's a bit like a sheer lip balm, probably. Yeah, exactly. Which really appeals to me because I'm a lip balm hoe. And I'm really into neutrals and peaches lately, so I really want to try the shades in Coconuts About You and You're a Peach. Because mm -hmm. I feel that the rest of the stuff I have in other formulas that I already enjoy, so I don't really need them. So I personally think that if I disregard the packaging, which is the only kind of novelty thing about this, I probably have a lip balm or like a sheer lip balm mm -hmm. of all of these colors if I really wanted them. And um, I prefer my sheer lip balms to be in more neutral colors. I really don't like, uh, for instance, a sheer lip balm of a red color because I, mm -hmm. I don't get it. I think red is meant to be a statement color. Like, either wear a red or don't wear it. Yeah, for me, I like sheer reds because they make me feel put together, but not as in your face as a regular red lip would. They make me feel pretty and feminine, but a more soft, pretty and feminine than a regular red lip. I can totally see that. But uh, it, like I said, it's just a personal thing. Mm -hmm. I would like yeah. to wear reds to their full intensity. And maybe it also has to do with the fact that it just doesn't look good on me if I put a sheer red. With each to their preference, you know? Definitely. Speaking of red, Manny MUA with uh, his brand Lunar Beauty is coming out with a Strawberry Dreams palette coming soon and no price point summer 2019. I don't know who does his packaging, but every time it's been really beautiful and on point. Like, I'm not sure if you saw his highlighters. That yes. was like the best Sailor Moon shit I've ever seen and I still have them on my wish list. And this one is just so beautiful, the packaging itself. Yeah. When I was scrolling through my Instagram the other day, I just, I was mindlessly scrolling. And then I saw this, I didn't even read what it was. And I was like, oh, that looks really pretty. Yeah, I mean, his creative team is really doing a beautiful job with these. And for me, like, I've not bought from him. But he's not really cancelled in my book either. Like, I was really on board with cancelling him because... I just got caught in the wave with the people that were mad at him. But the more I thought about it, the more I was like, the only thing I could accuse many MUA of is of being a shitty friend. And like, is that enough to not make me buy if I like it? I don't, I don't think so. I, I don't really have feelings for many one way or the other. I'm not a fan of his because I don't feel like he's the type of person that I vibe with. But yeah, at the same exactly. time, he's not cancelled for me either. Yeah. So I, I think with a lot of these influencer brands, buying the product will probably have a lot to do with whether you like the person behind it or not. For me, I honestly don't care about him. Like, I don't care either, either way. I. But if I really do like this, I don't know. I might, I might get it if it's not like something that I have 10 times over because that packaging is just... It's what my dreams are made of. <laughs> Speaking of packaging, Kiko came out with something new and how dare they do this to me during my no buy? How, how dare they? Let's Sic Sicilian notes. Oh gosh darn. Oh man, that's beautiful. And the, you like know, the, that's beautiful. 
<laughs> yeah, and like the 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 thing, the model on the bra- on the bronzers and highlights, and the oranges and everything. I hate them so much. How dare they? Yeah, I. Oh my goodness, this is gorgeous. Yeah, and I mean, I even look at the palette and I'm like, that's the most useless uh, compartmentalization ever. But I want it because it reminds me of stained glass windows. Yes, stained glass windows. Exactly. That's what I was going to say. I I would never buy it because I would never use it. And I don't like buying things just to, you know, open them and see how pretty they are. But I do applaud them for the beauty, the sheer beauty of this product. Yeah. I'm honestly like if if they're still going to have the bronzers and the highlighters when I'm done um, with just you know my no buy and stuff, I think I'm gonna grab one of those. <laughs> I am definitely going to swatch the bronzers in store because, for one, we have a Kiko store around here and <gasps> I can so actually jealous. swatch things. Oh, trust me, I, I'm jealous of myself sometimes because <laughs> I can't believe we have a Kiko store in our small town here. <laughs> Speaking of corals, uh, Natasha Denona is coming out with the, a new nine, uh, nine, sorry, five pack. One of those small palette. ones. Yes, I saw it. Forty-eight dollars for five full-size eyeshadows. I mean, uh, forty-eight dollars though. Yeah, I'm, I'm finding it hard to swallow for only five eyeshadows. In that case, I would just invest in that Sunrise palette. Yeah, or just if you have singles, similar singles, just dupe it. But it is a beautiful assortment of shades, from what I can see in the swatches. Yes, they are, the, the shades are really beautiful and they work beautifully together. And I think this would work really nicely for someone who prefers a bit more subdued makeup, but mm. wants to try something colorful and more glitzy. Like that shade in the middle looks really glitzy and really beautiful. You know what's strange? That on some swatches it looks silver. On other swatches, it looks like a silver to a purple duochrome. In yes. other swatches, it looks um, like an icy sort of lilac purple. And I'm like, w- which is it? Make up your damn mind. The kind of shades I fall for, though. The ones that yeah. can decide what they are. <laughs> I think so, I'm going to try and dupe this out in my own collection. Maybe do a video inspired by it. Because I did do one inspired by her cranberry palette at a certain point. Mm-hmm. I am still uh, very interested to try Natasha's formula at some point, but she really needs to release a palette that I strongly desire. Yeah, because the, her prices are just insane. That and, you know, um, Pat McGrath's prices are insane as well. And as you know, I, I kind of collect Pat McGrath at this point. Yeah, but she's but Pat. She does, but she also does everything right. There's exactly. the packaging, there's the full marketing behind it. And the, the different, like kinds of colors and shades and textures in her palettes and it just gets you with all of that whereas Natasha relies on formula mainly her packaging has never really been anything truly special yeah in my opinion and yeah it has to be a truly special formula you know what rubbed me the wrong way about the Natasha from the start like with Pat like I, I I knew who Pat McGrath was before she started True. her own makeup line. Like she she was she was Pat. She was Pat McGrath. Everybody knew her. True. So when she came out with expensive palettes, I was like, okay, well deserved. You mm-hmm. worked your ass off. You're a world renowned makeup artist. Go ahead. But Natasha Denona, I had never heard of Natasha mm-hmm. Denona before. Like, who are you to come asking for these prices? What? Who the fuck is that you? So I feel that kind of rubbed me the wrong way about yeah. it. Yeah, I had the same feeling when she released those huge palettes in the very beginning that were like $240. I was like, who the fuck are you to charge yeah. $240 for a palette? Who are you? Exactly. So okay. I never really got on board with that. And since then, she hasn't really like progressed into like making something that's more special. So I kind of like, eh, Natasha, yeah. someday. Yeah, meh. Okay, Fenty is coming out to something new. Um, apparently, these were sneak peek to doing a promo video for her opening new locations or releasing stuff in um, certain Asian countries. And they were kind of shown in the video. It seems to be like a foundation-y type of product and some blush face duos. And there's nothing confirmed yet, but apparently they will be available during September. I'm into her. 
Yeah, same. And the, her products, uh, except the Stana lip paint, which I don't get very well along with the formula, haven't disappointed me. I'm curious to try her blushes, but I don't think I'm gonna buy any foundation products from her because I, I did find like two foundations that I like that are really watery and sheer, like I enjoy them. So I don't really want to get more, except I, I might fall into the hype, I'm human. But the, my plans are not to get more. Oh, I'm definitely not buying more foundations because I already bought more than enough this year and all of them were exorbitantly expensive. <laughs> but I do think she needed to release something that's a little bit more dewy finish foundation because the, the previous foundation was a super matte one, right? Yeah, oh boy. Dude, we, we have the interior of the Manny MUA palette. Way. Oh, we do? Yeah, I, I just saw it as I was scrolling by. And it's colorful. I'm definitely not going to grab it because I'm sure I have all of these colors. And, um, well, I do appreciate that the colorful... The, I do appreciate that the colors inside are very pretty. I don't really understand the color story much. Yeah, it's... Um... You've got purples, you've got mauves, you've got that one random red, that one random green, two blues, a gray, a white, a silver, and a pink. It's just, it feels a bit disjointed. It doesn't yes. fit the, the packaging itself. So just like with his first palette, his first palette was meant to be some sort of a mashup between very neutral and very colorful. And to me, yeah. it just felt very discombobulated and so does this one. Love the word, word discombobulated, although I never <laughs> managed to pronounce it correctly. One of my fave words by far. I love you for using it. Thank you, thank you. I just don't understand his color stories. I don't maybe... get it either. And maybe it's the disappointment that it's not what I would I envisioned it to be. I imagined a smooth radiation between two silvers, then maybe icy pink silvers. Pink, mattes, mauve mattes, and maybe ease it into a dark mauvey red type of situation. Like, I would have seen that gradient going on, but not what he has now, because those blues, what, what, what's strawberry about those blues? I don't get yeah, it. Exactly. For, for why are you calling your palette strawberry dreams if there's nothing strawberry about it? I mean, there's like that red shade in the middle, the smack middle, that maybe is a strawberry. And I can totally imagine the green being like, okay, the, I don't know, the leaves or something of the plant. But how the fuck is blue anything? Even a rotten strawberry isn't blue. Just speak about something more cohesive. Menagerie Cosmetics came out with their uh, purple palette. So what do you think? I am really itching to try Menagerie, especially after that last palette they released with the blue greens. I am this close to buying that palette. I'm really <laughs> doing my best not to buy it and luckily it's out of stock at the moment. So I did see this one and my first reaction was <gasps> oh my gosh, I want this. But then They're I releasing that... singles of the blue one, you know? I know, but I... I you no, want the whole I thing. It, I want it in a palette. <laughs> <laughs> I else? think this is beautiful, but I am not going to get it and I will tell you why. Um... There is just a bit of a disbalance here for me personally between mattes and shimmers. Mm -hmm. I prefer to have a bit more of like half in half. Mm -hmm. And also there is not a lot of contrast. Like the mm -hmm. only shimmer that you can put on your lid is that beautiful lavender purple. But that's not a very light shade. So you're going to end up with very monochromatic, like not contrasting look. I don't know, understand what I'm trying to say here. I'm being very... <laughs> discombobulated <laughs> i think i would have loved these better as singles because i definitely do see some shades that i would find entirely unique but i i wouldn't buy this as a like i like the color scheme in itself i like the uh, thought and artistry but mm -hmm. these aren't the types of purples that i always pull for because these are very bluish purples i like more reddish types of purples at least on my skin tone so if they were singles, maybe I would get them, but as a whole palette, not entirely sure. Yeah, I can see where she draws inspiration for because she calls it the Violet mm. Ink palette. So I can see where exactly all these colors come from. But 
half of these purples are not the kind of purples that I like to wear mm -hmm. and I just don't see I I will have to pull out other things to put on my lid to pair with this palette and then I think well I already have all these other mats elsewhere so what's the point exactly let's let me show you something absolutely ridiculous because Beauty Blender is doing the most. They've come out with a set of brushes and of course they couldn't just do regular brushes. What they... the fuck is this in the end of the brush? It, does it, doesn't it look like a sex toy? <laughs> it, I no, mean... but now it does. Thank you for the image. <laughs> Seriously, apparently it's a cooling end, like one of those jade roller things that you would use under your eyes to like cool the area. This uh, looks to me like one of the most gimmicky things I've seen. God, recently. yeah. And 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 here here are out these prices. The big like the big blow like the powder one, sixty fucking dollars. Holy mother of crap! Are you what? kidding me? Yeah, and the others are like 33, 20, 20, 22, up thirty. But like, who the fuck are you to ask me? Sixty dollar for a powder brush? Are you are you Chiku Hodo? Are you Haku Hodo? Who are you? Yeah, Beauty Blender takes themselves a little too seriously. No, not to mention those like flesh colored handles. I just, no. I just no. Nothing about the design of these makes any sense to me. I yeah. the ferrule is like sort of slanted, which is artistic, but it totally doesn't make sense with that gimmicky roller thing in the end. And also, the shapes of these brushes are not anything groundbreaking. Exactly, exactly. And that uh, boring flesh color doesn't do anything. No, nothing about these brushes will make me spend even like ten dollars on them. I know, like it's it's way too much, way way too much. Uh, let's speak about something that I know you like, but I've not talked about. Mm -hmm. And it's Mother Pat's uh, foundation range. I already bought the foundation. <laughs> you better film a review. The, the people need I it. Will. I will. <laughs> I mean, yes. aside from being gloriously expensive, which is not surprising, $68, 35 millimeters each, satin finish, sheer to medium coverage for fresh, natural looking skin, self setting. I honestly really love the gradation that this has mm -hmm. and how you can really tell that a woman of color created this. And a makeup artist. And Someone a makeup who artist. understands undertones because I had to choose my shade and um, the descriptions of the shades are pretty self explanatory. Art is having a collaboration with a fitness guru. She's a beautiful girl. I don't know her, I don't care to know her, but I, it seems uh, it's, it's a very mar clever marketing ploy because you tap into a potential market that you didn't have before, a potential audience, and that is her fitness fans, which maybe wouldn't be into makeup otherwise, or wouldn't know about your product. But it's like, wh why are you collabing with a fitness beauty guru? Because I think brands at this point are just trying to pull whatever they can out of their sleeve to sell their products. Oh, yeah. Clever ploy. It's, really, it's really basic. It's really neutral. I would see it for someone that, as I said, is sporty, maybe isn't that much into makeup or is just into natural light makeup. I, I would see it, but it's... Ah, uh, the marketing tactics. This palette is what Tarte does best, which is... Neutrals. Neutrals. And um, I can see how people who like neutrals will like this, but you must have lived on another planet and never tried anything from Tarte before to not have all these colors already time and time again in their other palettes. True. And I don't know whether you noticed the packaging of this, but the packaging of this looks like something that someone at the age of 10 would enjoy, but not someone at the age of 36. I find that I find that a lot lately. Like the these packagings are absolutely ridiculous. Like there's been a lot of I, I don't think we're gonna discuss them at length, but there's been like a lot of Pac-Man collabs, and it's just it's like peak late stage capitalism. Like what about Pac-Man says makeup? 
Wait, no which... idea. And the packaging is also really childish. They're basically preying on our sense of nostalgia and our um, happy memories just to sell us some overpriced sparkle dust. And I'm not about that life. I'm really no. not about that life. No, it's it's very manipulative, but I can see right through you, brands. Exactly. Speaking of la- late stage capitalism, I think Frida Kahlo is currently rolling in her grave. Oh, Jesus. What I, is this? It, it is horrendous because it does not uh, it doesn't match her memory and her politics at all. She was a staunch feminist. She fought against beauty standards. She was known for her unibrow because she did not give a shit about mm-hmm. that. And they've got a fucking brow kit. Wow, that's just offensive. Yeah, and it's just, it's ridiculous for someone that was so staunchly anti-capitalism, uh, capitalism, anti-beauty standards. You ju- She's just plastered everywhere in the name of profit. Yeah, I, I just think that's, I, for, to me, that's really bad taste. Why pick someone who clearly would not have appreciated anything about what you're trying to sell and the way you're trying to sell it? It's just disrespectful. I'm sorry, this is it just is. disrespectful. It is, it is. And, and not to mention, I mean, okay, let's leave alone the fucking eyebrow thing, which is just, as I said, disrespectful, contrary to everything that she stood for. It's very funny to me that they're selling a floral headband for $18. These are, a I've, I've, headband. for $18. And I've, I've seen this on AliExpress. They're two dollars. I assure you, you can get them for two, three dollars. The Definitely. hunger, the hunger for profit is just shameless. shameless. Yeah, I was gonna say shameless is the word you have to use here. <laughs> There's absolutely no shame anymore. I, I don't fucking know what this is. This is just a slap in the face. Yeah. I mean, they just, just, just dig her out of her grave and slap her. Seriously. Like, how are point. they even allowed to do this? Are they allowed to do this? Aren't there any descendants of Frida Kahlo who, who can be like? I know they keep no. fighting it. I know they keep no. fighting it, as far as I know. But I'm not. I don't know the details of it. Okay. Well, this is really offensive. So I can imagine they're really pissed. I would be really pissed as well. Yeah. Speaking of hunger for profit, so Lady Gaga came out with this house laboratories makeup Mm -hmm. and everybody and their moms was so excited for it and then she delivered this crap it's like yeah i mean all of this hype and for what for basic shit i'm actually very surprised that someone as um eccentric as lady gaga someone who prides themselves on being creative thinking out of the box, pushing the boundaries of what we consider a norm, comes out with something so incredibly boring. Honestly, I'm probably going to get hate from her stance for this, but this is a money grab. And the fact that it's through Amazon, that it's a pre-order that's two months in advance... Just yeah, that's gets... also really iffy to me as well. And for someone like Lady Gaga that says she's so pro-people or whatever, to launch it on Prime Day with Amazon while the workers are striking striking to get better conditions is just yeah. Not not a fan of that decision. I don't understand this release and it doesn't make any sense with Lady Gaga, so the only reason I would assume she does it for is money. Yeah. But she, doesn't she have enough? That, that's what I'm wondering. Like you have so much money, you could really do something so innovative and on brand and not kiss Amazon's ass. I don't get it. Well, they must have given her a lot of money. Yeah, well, it's Amazon and they're like capitalist villains. I'm not surprised. Next, let's talk some makeup revolution. They exhaust me with their releases, but it seems that they've picked up people's interest with these food palettes, particularly Mm -hmm. that avocado Mm -hmm. one. Yes, the avocado one is the one that I was eyeballing. <laughs> I, I, I see the appeal, but one of my friends just kindly gifted me the Sydney Grace Danny's Dream Bundle, 
-hmm. we we kind of we did like we did a a makeup switch i sent her stuff from romania she sent me stuff from the us that i wouldn't have gotten otherwise yeah because of the shipping and she gifted me that green bundle from sydney grace i have absolutely no need or interest in that avocado palette I don't know why, for one, because I've never really bought anything from iHeart Revolution and I don't really think it would be something I would buy to use more than once. It would be like, oh, avocado, it's so cute, let me buy it because it's so cheap and then I'll use it once and be like, okay, now I'm done with it. So I don't fall for that kind of uh, purchasing mentality, so I'm not going to buy this, but I do think it looks really I, it's 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 clever. It's a clever play on the new trend of food themed eye, eyeshadow palettes. Yeah, definitely. I do feel like the pizza palette and um, actually yeah. all of these, they're not something that I would look in, at in my vanity and, and enjoy looking at the packaging, which I kind of get over bad packaging with these ones. Just they put me off because they are so childish. Mm. Uh, High Heart Revolution, I've had a few of their palettes. The quality is hit and miss. And I'm wary of buying more from them because the price lures me in. And then because the um, quality is hit and miss, I just tend not to play with them as much as I do formulas that I can trust. Their shimmers are by far the best. The mattes are always so-and-so. Yeah. These are definitely not something I would ever be interested in. But I can see where they're drawing inspiration from. Uh, I actually have to say that Red Pepper palette is pretty disappointing because it's not very fiery. Oh yeah, it's. I think it's more the red on B uh, with a red background that makes it so fiery. I think color story wise, the the avocado one is probably the best one. Yeah, it's the most on point and the most colorful. Yeah, because I can see warmer greens, I can see a little bit of blue, I can see deeper shades of like cooler greens. So I can see that one being a, a more of a hit, but the other two. Mm -mm. Let's talk more mm. summer makeup. So we've got two summer collections from the Kardashians. Mm -hmm. um, Kylie's got her Under the Sea summer collection. Uh, which got lip blush, what the hell is that? Uh, high gloss lipstick, shimmer eye glazes, eyeshadow palette, which is $42. Lipstick bundles, lipstick, lip, lip gloss bundles, 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 whatever. I think we, we have a saying in Romanian that goes like reheated soup, reheated mm. chorba. Which yes. Is basically which, which basically is like same thing, just served to you in another setting. Same shit, different day. Exactly. And I see, I mean, this looks nice. No, no lie, it appeals to me because it does look very nicely curated. It's just the same neutral palette with a pop of green or a pop of something that we, we keep seeing. And her lip shades are nothing new. Nah, I'm not falling for Kylie at all. And this uh, release is yet again nothing I'm interested in. I mean, why the I, hell should I pay $42 for this when I just can just go grab Colourpop for like 12 to 16 Fuck that shit. Yeah, no way. Uh, does she have those like pressed cream eyeshadows that uh, are yeah. Yeah, gaining a bit of popularity are... now? No, they're gaining a bit popularity. You just wait, like all of these jelly cream formulas, wait six months. And YouTubers will start decluttering them because they dry it out. Yeah, they're a dangerous product to buy. I agree. Especially it, at a very high price point. Don't waste your money. I mean, I would waste my money if I had a small collection. And the, I would use these so much. Mm. Like maybe a couple of times a week I would use this. I, at the end of a couple of months after they dry out, I would feel like I, I have gotten my money's worth. But otherwise, it's like you're going to use it once every month and it's going to dry out and then you're going to feel cheated of your money. Hourglass released those scattered light eyeshadows and Samantha, Sam Ravendal, she spoke mm -hmm. so highly of them that I felt compelled to try them. And I paid 30 euros for oh one of God. those. And I found out that my Colourpop ones work just as well. Um, oh, you know I, what? That's good to know. Yes. <laughs> That's good I to know for me. I could have Colourpop eyeshadows for the same price. Jesus Christ. Oh my God. Speaking of, can't tell the difference. So oh. her sister's collection, mm. the so fiery collection, mm. 
I feel like we're back in 2016 or 17 when these types of color schemes were gaining traction. So I'm looking at this palette and I'm thinking Zoeva Coco Blend palette. Like Like if Zoeva Coco Blend and Naked Heat had a child. Yes. But like the child looks very much like the Zoeva Coco Blend. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's like the thing is that Zoeva is amazing quality. It has the same type of cardboard packaging, but it's half the price of this KKW bullshit. True. This is like $45 and the Zoeva ones are like 20 Yeah, I think we're first of all off the warm toned eyeshadow palette trend. Everyone's got already 10 of them. So let's move on to something more interesting. And second of all, Kim, I'm not going to pay $30 more just because your name is on it. I'm God, sorry. Yeah. And you know what I heard? I heard people in Hawaii are a bit pissed at the names because they... Um, they involve a lot of Hawaiian culture, including something called Pelis Curse. I can't even see the names of the eyeshadow of the eyeshadows because they're not written on the palette. Yeah, I mean, you're asking me $45 and you don't even have the names. So Eva has the names. They do. It's pathetic. Uh, I'm not a fan of the Kardashian family, so I'm going to not say really offensive things on your channel. <laughs> but I just I don't understand why any of these people is famous and why they are in any way a standard or a model, something to aspire to. It's just pop culture. I mean, I feel that there's a very complicated topic to navigate as to why they are popular and why people love them. And this video is in the place for it. <laughs> no, we can we can have a an hour, another one and a half hour discussion on what's wrong with the exactly. world and their obsession with the Kardashians. Sent you the glam light um, palette. So they kept making this food themed packaging palette that to me grosses me out for reasons I've stated previously. And it seems that they've moved to art. This looks like child's makeup. Yeah, it does. And it's no, nothing about glam light. No. Glam light absolutely 100% does not do it for me. And this palette is yet another example of that. Oh my god, $45 and for what? For colors that you already have arranged in like a, something that an artist would use and you would be feeling like one when you use it? I, I don't even use one of those when I properly paint. I mean, I, I don't like this one because the packaging is really, really wasteful. Like there's a lot of space there. Yeah. And it just, yeah, I don't, I don't like it. I feel like the size of the pens is a little too small for the whole, for the overall yeah, size. Yeah, exactly. They should have cut out a bit of that wood or whatever it is. In first instance, it strikes as, oh, look pretty, so many colors. But then you look at it and you think, oh, I have this color, I have this color, I have this color, I have this color. Mm -hmm. Oh, no. Mm, actually, nothing about this eyeshadow palette is very special. Yeah, except, you know, that crazy shape. But if you really want to feel fancy, just buy one of those. They're super cheap. Anything, but please don't pay $45 for this. And there was like a bit of a scandal. An indie brand accused them of stealing this design from them, which I felt was a bit of a stretch because honestly, it's not really that unique of an idea. Someone was bound up to come with it. Yeah, people need to hold back a little bit on those uh, you stole my idea sort of thing because at this point, everything's been done and someone was bound to come up with this sooner or later makeup artistry creativity painting exactly it's, two plus two equals it's four oh you know what i forgot to mention at the start of the video uh, this type of video was popularized by samantha march with her will i buy it series and she's got a community playlist where we all gather and roast products so if you guys want to hear more about opinions on your products that's where you should go and she recently came out with a collab with Ofra. Yes, I saw that. So there's like a split uh, pan highlighter, which has Pillow Talk and Star Island. Mm -hmm. And then some nude lip sets. And I feel that this is very on brand for Samantha because she always talks about Ofra and her favorites, especially the lip products. Okay. I don't really follow Samantha. I 
think I followed her for a little bit, but then I just kind of fell off the train. I do very much appreciate her creativity with coming up with new video ideas. And um, I think it's great for her that a brand like like Ofra has uh, approached her. Congratulations to her. All the best. These highlighters are quite pale, so they're probably going to work mostly for very pale people. And they are, I think, already available in the lineup of... Of her yeah. Why? Why is she coming up with something they already have in their lineup? Then why not something new? I don't know. I think it was like a set of her favorites, oh, or like something. That. Yeah, like some people, like some brands do do that. For example, Benefit is notorious for like doing sets of favorites. Yeah. I'm not sure if this would will come to the retailer that we have for Ofra because it's an online site and they don't have any everything. Yeah. If if it does. I'll probably grab the highlighter, not the lip set, because these are liquid lipsticks and I'm not a fan of liquid lipsticks. But if it doesn't, I will just you support her in spirit. The formula of Ofra is actually quite nice. I do have one of their highlighters in a mini because I really wanted mm -hmm. to try the formula. And the formula is really nice. And I've heard really good things about Pillow Talk. Oh, uh, let's talk about one more thing and wrap it up. Luxie is coming out with new singles. Oh, Luxy. I love Luxy. I love them as well. And they're so on my list for after my no buy. I don't keep you saying anything. Yeah, I do have a couple of singles from them and I do love them. I love their shimmer formula. She has a great formula. I do she like does. her. I really want to try from the ones that are here. I want to try Iced. Not that deep. Uh, Devious. And violin violin i feel that these oh, would be pretty Devious pretty different gorgeous. yeah yes so if i wasn't currently pressing all of my indie eyeshadows and realizing that i own all of these i would probably have been like oh yes devious and Shiny. not that deep i definitely <laughs> need them <laughs> but i just pressed the shadow mm. that looks exactly like not that deep you know i probably that's, that's... have them already because of you. I think I probably have some notorious deep orbit that are that are just that similar to these. Ah, oh, yeah. you you're That's really good. That's my problem with buying those singles. Yeah, it's terrible because I know I have all of these eyeshadows in a loose form mm -hmm. and the only thing I need to pull out now is pressing all of them and starting to use yeah. them again and I will never have to buy any other eyeshadow ever again. But yeah. for everyone out there who hasn't tried Luxy, her formula is stunning and you're really going to enjoy this and her price point is also really good and she oh, does yeah. sales very often. Yeah, her price point is absolutely excellent. Yeah, so highly recommend. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that was the last release. Everything's dying around us. Laptop so, lights. Yes, and I don't think I was very roasty. I apologize for that. I definitely br brought the roast levels down on this video, which I apologize for. But, you know, I just thought it was really fun to talk about new releases with a fellow makeup lover and not just with myself. But I, I think we really did play off nicely of each other. Like, yes. I think we really did keep a discussion rolling. We got really happy. I'm really happy that we got to make this video. And maybe we can do it again another time. Because it was so much fun not talking just by myself. Thank okay. you so much for having me on your channel. And for allowing me to ramble about makeup with you. Because normally I just have no one to talk to. So it, I have like internal conversations with myself about new makeup releases. We honestly should do this more often. Even without recording. Just chatting by ourselves. I, I would love it. I would love that. <laughs> oh, that's great. We, 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 need, we need to settle another date soon. <laughs> it was also very easy talking to you because I was a little bit worried. Oh my God, I don't know you and we're going to yes, talk fast. How is that going to go? Am I going to be awkward? But I think it went really well. Yeah, I'm so happy. And I'm so happy that we get to make a video out of this. Uh, so before anything dies, thanks everybody for listening and tuning in. Thank you so much for um, coming here and talking to me about makeup releases. It's been so Absolutely much fun. My pleasure. So much fun. And well, I hope everybody has a wonderful evening, morning, lunch, whatever it is where you're from. And if you haven't subscribed to Mia's channel already, <laughs> please go ahead and hit that subscribe button. <laughs> Thank you. I'll also leave Mariam's channel down below and in the cards. So you better go check her out or else it's, it's a serious threat. You better do it. <laughs> okay. Bye, everyone. Bye.